Crossings is a tool that we use to understand Christianity. It's a lens, a way of understanding life. A really dynamic, vibrant community began as typewritten pages being handed around a university. All of my imperfections being smart for generosity. It's become such a way of life for me. It really is good, and it is something new. I'm the associate pastor at Freedom's United Church of Christ, which is in St. Charles, Missouri, which is just west of St. Louis. And essentially, it's what the, what the conference is set for, to take the gospel and apply it to our everyday life. What I find intriguing about it uh, as a pastor is that it's, it's a new way of looking at scripture particularly if you're, per, if you're preparing for a sermon. It's a new way of looking at worship planning. Um, what I've enjoyed, because I love theology, has been the, I've enjoyed the interaction and, and, the, and the, the deep theological thought uh, in our conversations, in our comments, uh, in, in discussions we've had around, we've had around the table. Um, I think I've also uh, found a new, um, a new community of, of, uh, of, of, of Christian believers, which has kind of been, which has been really nice. What I've learned is, and, and again, it, it took me a day to kind of figure it out. You basically start with uh, a diagnosis. What are the things that cause us to react to scripture the way we do. And then at some point, once you've gone through the bad apples and, and what, what, what those things that make our heart not be receptive to God, and then there's a point where you intersect, where does Jesus come into it? Where does the gospel inter, intersect into it? And then from there, you once you've, once you've found the place where, where Jesus comes into uh, into the situation, uh, then you begin this prognosis. It's it's a very different way of looking at scripture that I find really intriguing. Um, I I really was not sure about what I was getting into when I got uh, uh, when I came or when Sherman asked me to come and 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 lead and lead music. It's more than just a spiritual retreat. It is that. It's more than just a week of Bible study. It is that. It's taking scripture and really delving deep into um, the, the issues that confront everyday people. Talking about silence was, is, uh, was, it was quite a chore to do the research on my part in terms of selecting music. There's not a lot of music that talks about God's silence. But what I've seen is that what I chose has has intersected um, very well with what we've talked about. I think it was music to ministry. When I when I went to college, my my voice professor wanted me uh, to study and to sing professionally and to do opera. And I love opera. When I was 16 years old, I began contemplating what a vocation in ministry would look like. And it wasn't until I started college that I realized that's where I felt that like God wanted me to be. And the outlet for that was music. And so uh, I pursued that in college, I pursued it in graduate school. I enjoyed the interaction with working with choirs or working with congregations. Uh, so it's, it's been, it's, it's the music. I brought the music to the ministry but the ministry, it, it, has, it has morphed into a, a music ministry for, for all intents and purposes. For some people, it's the songs that are sung. For some people, Amazing Grace really speaks to where they are in their spiritual journey. For me, um, being able to, to uh, encourage people to sing I think is another way of of us uh, of us praying. Uh, Brian Wren is a is a uh, is a composer and church church musician in England, and he wrote a book 
entitled praying twice, which most people think, well, what does that mean? What essentially it means is when we, when we sing, we are praying again. Um, our hymns are basically prayers that were written by him, uh, by him, by him writers. So I think at times there's no other way to express our love for God than singing or listening to a piece of music or listening to a choir sing or in this context uh, standing up in front of a group of folks and leading them in congregational singing and just stops and then I just stop singing just to listen to what is going on there so I, I, I think that it, it I think it draws us closer to God oh gosh amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see.